My favorite kind of character in fighting games is... Wait. Get out of here. The script is too long for my usual format. In fighting games, I love the mimic character. Why? Because they're fun. I find the switching between movesets between rounds keeps things from being dull. Now, my favorite kind of mimic character might be a little different from your idea of a mimic character. That is because there are many different types of mimic characters. So let's figure out what is a mimic character. To put it simply, a mimic character is a character that copies something from another character. What makes these mimic characters unique from each other is how they copy. And how they copy can be very similar to one another or very different. And to make things simple, I'm going to put all these types of mimic characters into simple, easy to understand categories. And the first category we'll start with is the shapeshifter. The shapeshifter is a character that usually has their own move set, but after a certain input or move, they're able to temporarily or permanently transform into another character, copying their looks and their move set. A few examples of the shapeshifter is you got my boy Shang Tsung from Mortal Kombat and 12 from Street Fighter Third Strike. The next category of mimic characters I'll be going over is the move stealer. The move stealer is pretty simple. They steal moves. Usually they have a set move set, but after landing a certain attack or a certain input, they're able to steal usually just one move from the opponent. Examples of move stealers is Kirby from Super Smash Bros., Seth from Street Fighter V, and Yoshimitsu from Tekken 4. Yeah, if you timed Yoshimitsu's Soul Stealer move just right, you'd be able to copy the opponent's moves. Now sadly this was only in Tekken 4. They removed this feature after just one game. And the next category is the Amalgamation Fighter. The Amalgamation Fighter is pretty simple. Their moveset is usually just a big amalgamation of other characters' moves, and sometimes they have their own unique special moves of their own. Now some examples are Necrid from Soul Calibur 2, Dural from Virtua Fighter, Honey the Cat and Metal Sonic from Sonic the Fighters, and Ogre from Tekken. Now the last in my personal favorite category, the Copycat. Now this category is the one I'm sure most people think of when they think of the Mimic character. The Copycat character has absolutely no unique moves of their own instead copying the entire move list of another character. And which character they copy is usually dependent on the game. Sometimes they copy a random character, sometimes they copy their opponent, and sometimes they copy the previous opponent they just defeated. Also depending on the game, the copycat character may switch movesets between rounds, between matches, or at will. There's quite a few examples of copycat characters. Combot from Tekken 4, Marionette and Shadow from Darkstalkers, Edgemaster from Soul Calibur, Clonus from Biofreaks, Unknown from Tekken Tag 1, and of course, Mokujin. Except for a few oddball characters, 99% of all mimic characters can be put in those four categories. Alright, my brain cells aren't working well enough for me to smoothly segue to this next section. So I'm going to talk about the history of mimic characters, or roughly the first mimic characters. So let's go back in time roughly 30 years ago to 1992. October of 1992 was when Mortal Kombat first hit the arcades, and with it, Shang Tsung. Now Shang Tsung is one of the first and one of the best mimic characters. There's a few key words there. One of. A few months before Mortal Kombat was released in July of 1992 was a game from Japan that hit the arcades called World Heroes. And the final boss of World Heroes was also a shape-shifting mimic character, just like Mortal Kombat. The final boss's name was Gigas. I'm pretty sure his design is a reference to the T-1000 from Terminator. I like his design. And so Gigas takes home the award for being the first mimic character in fighting games. Probably. I say probably because I have not played every single fighting game in the world. Plus there's a whole bunch of technicalies. What about Yer Kong Fu? Blues is a mirror image of Oolong, the main character. Even has the same moves. So to keep things from being complicated, I'm just sticking to fighting games where you can play against another person. And so World Heroes was the oldest fighting game I could find with a mimic character. Now Gigas might be a mimic character, but he wasn't a playable mimic character. That award goes to Shang Tsung in Mortal Kombat 2 that came out in 1993. And so in the early 90s, the big three was Gigas, Shang Tsung, and Dural. Now there could have been a fourth character amongst these three. That's right, I'm going to talk about a what-if mimic character. And what was the name of this character? It was Rugal Bernstein. In a developer interview, it was stated that Rugal could learn any move that he saw just once, but they didn't have enough memory to execute the idea. Now, does this mean Rugal would have been a mimic character? Who knows? Just a bunch of what-ifs and maybes. Plus, I just wanted to talk about Rugal. He's one of my favorite fighting game characters. All right, real quick, listen to this. Oi. 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 Now wasn't that beautiful? 
That's sarcasm, by the way. Now, why am I talking about 3D balls? A mediocre game released in 1994. It's because this game has a Shang Tsung style input that allows you to transform into any other character in the game. Now this can be done with every character. So technically, every character in this game is a mimic character. All right, enough talking about balls. So at this point of the video, I decided to rewrite the script and scrap about eight hours of footage of 50 to 60 different games because this segment got pretty redundant. It was basically just me going, oh wow, Sakura from Magical Battle Arena can mimic other characters and then repeating that for another 50 or 60 different characters. Just making this video like an hour long of me just rambling on. So instead, we're going to go back to my favorite archetype, the copycat character, because there's a little more depth to it. I'll explain in a second. There are three tiers of the copycat character. There's tier one, tier two, and the honored one. All right, let's start with tier one. Now tier one copycat characters may have a unique name, a unique intro, or a unique win pose. They might have a unique color palette or unique look to them. But the moment the round starts, from a gameplay standpoint, they don't really have anything unique to them. They just simply copy everything about whoever they're copying. Their reach, their hurt box, their hit box, nothing really changes. You don't really need to go into practice mode to learn anything special with them. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that. And characters who fit in this tier are characters like Marionette, Shadow, Eleven from Street Fighter V. And that's just a few examples of tier one. Characters who just truly copy everything about a character. Let's move on to tier two. Now tier two is primarily dominated by Bandai Namco mimic characters. Characters like Unknown, Combot, Charade, Olkadon, and Edge Master. Now I relate a lot to Edge Master because after all, I myself am a master of edging. Now, what makes Tier 2 unique from Tier 1? Well, look at this. Let me explain real quick what I just showed you. What this means is that the Tier 2 Mimic characters have something what I call a static frame, which means is that their hurtbox and hitbox does not change. This gives the Tier 2 copycat characters a completely unique range compared to whoever they're copying. Sadly, the only thing that really changes is just reach. There's really no crazy unique combos or anything that I could find. So the only thing this means is that the tier 2 copycat characters will have longer reach than most female characters or shorter reach than the larger characters. So if you put them in a mirror match, there's a chance that they just might be slightly better or slightly worse in neutral. So tier 2 characters aren't that much different from tier 1 characters. It's just a slight different in reach makes them unique. And that's it for tier 2. Now I did mention a third tier, but that was like a hypothetical perfect mimic character. Like imagine if there was a perfect blend of video game mechanics, like a intricate combo system paired together with a character with a static height. Not too short, not too long, just right. While also making sure that every other character in the game has the right move list. And if you put all these things together, you get a perfect mimic character with many unique things about him. But of course, there's no way a character like this exists, right? You know it, it's Mokujin, my favorite fighting game character ever. He is perfect, just perfect. The master of mimics, the pinnacle, the apotheosis. And why is he so perfect? It's the perfect blend of every character's move list, the static height, the combo system. All this allows him to do some crazy things like dragging off forward three loops, unique pickups and combos with Armor King, combos he can't do, combos that are exclusive to him, changing game plans of certain characters, like when he copies bears. Now I could gush about this character for honestly an hour straight, so I'll keep it short for the sake of brevity. But if you are interested in knowing the things that are unique to Mokujin, I have a series called Mokujin Minute. It goes over all 56 characters Mokujin copies in Tekken Tag 2. I'll leave a link in the description. Now Mokujin is only really amazing in Tekken 6 and Tag 2. In Tekken 3, 5, Tag 1, but he's only a simple tier 2 character due to the simpler combo system. But he's still an amazing character in every game he's in. But he's at his most amazing in Tag 2. So Namco has struck gold. No, they have struck diamond with this character. And what do they do with him? Why? I and many other people have been asking for 
10 years now for this character to come back. Where is my wooden boy? There was even a poll back in February on that terrible website, Twitter or X or whatever it was called. 56,000 people voted. 74% of that is 41,400 people wanted him back. Yet nothing. And this poll was open for only a limited amount of time and there was no advertisement for it either. Well, whatever. I'm mad. I've been mad for 10 years. All right, I'm done venting. There's also the point where you can stop watching the video because I'm done going over mimic characters. The rest of this video is just me having a stream of consciousness and thoughts over the video and a few other things. So a few things I didn't go over is, well, some characters. For instance, like Rubber Soul or Shadow Dio or Christy and Tiger Jackson, uh, clone characters. I'm not exactly sure if they can be classified as a mimic character. I just wanted to go over characters that copy other characters as part of their main gameplay. So I didn't go over clone characters or anything like that. I also didn't go over like super specific things. For instance, Iggy and Jojo Heritage for the future has a move where he can summon like a sand clone of Dio and does an attack. Heck, I think he did one of his low attacks. Didn't go over anything like that. I also didn't go over every single mimic character in existence because as I said earlier that would have made the video pretty long and repetitive. I mean, I know they exist. I know there's meat in Mortal Kombat, Double and Skullgirls, and a whole bunch of other characters I didn't go over. And even some other games like Archon from 1983 had a shapeshifter, if I recall correctly. But yeah, I just want to go over, you know, mimic characters as a whole, the first mimic characters, and the best mimic character, which is of course Mokujin. If you disagree with that statement, I'd love to break it to you. You are objectively, subjectively, and technically wrong. Don't add me. And I think that's about it. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Uh, I don't know how to end a video, so bye.